So I called this video the top 10 best Xbox 360 and PS3 games, but it's really just my personal top 10, and they're more essential games than the best. And before you think that I've missed any obvious games out, I'm only considering games that released on the Xbox 360 and PS3. No re-releases, none of that sh** here. I'm also not going to do any Wii games, because I don't really care for the Wii, and I don't think Wii Sports is one of the best games of a generation. Brill. Anyway, right, let's get on with it. Number one, Fallout New Vegas. Originally, I thought to put Fallout 3 on here, but as an actual adult, and after playing The Outer Worlds, I've changed my mind. Obsidian did a f***ing fantastic job of taking the Fallout formula and twisting it into something similar, but really f***ing weird and unique. Just like Skyrim, it might suffer from Bethesda's usual janky bugs, but despite that, New Vegas' charm just shines through. And it's not only able to deliver one of the best Fallout experiences, but also one of the best RPG experiences you can find on these consoles. My favourite memories might be from Fallout 3, but I have to admit that Fallout New Vegas is a f***ing good game. Number 2. Fable 2. While we're on the topic of unbearable charm, Fable 2 is, in my opinion, by far the most enchanting game of this generation. Building upon its predecessor, Fable 2 features a much more expansive open world, and its systems manage to be complex, yet simple enough to stay engaging. Along with that, it's genuinely funny. The side quests have stood the test of time. They may be simple fetch quests, but they work, and so many collectible weapons and costumes and secrets make it easy to explore and get lost in. Not every game needs a hard-hitting story tackling a topical issue or the concept of right and wrong. Sometimes, you just want to be a bastard and grow some devil horns. Fable 2 Number 3 The Last of Us This list's most obvious choice. There's not much more I can say about The Last of Us that hasn't already been said. The characters, brilliant. The writing, fantastic. All the performances are beautiful, with significant props going to the lady who plays Ellie. The level of polish is second to none, a quality that only Naughty Dog can boast. And the gameplay is as solid as it gets. That feeling of punching an infected in the face as you scramble around trying to survive, unlike anything else in the game I've ever played. Just a quick unpopular opinion, I don't think it's a perfect 10 out of 10 like most people do. It's a solid 8 or 9, don't get me wrong. I do find that the gameplay starts to get a little bit repetitive towards the end. But that does not mean that I think The Last of Us isn't an outstanding achievement and by far the best game on PS3. It very clearly is. Number 4. Red Dead Redemption. I wrestled between GTA 4 and Red Dead for this spot, and while I do love stealing cars and going bowling, looking back I can't help but feel like Red Dead Redemption was such a masterclass in world building and immersion. A lot of other developers would have written a basic cliched western story and made you create some custom character that all the story beats just sort of happened to, but that's not Rockstar's way. Instead, they crafted one of the finest anti-heroes in fiction. John Marston might have been an outlaw, but he's striving to be a better man and leave his past sins behind him. An arc that's made all the more tragic by the game's central message that while times may change, you can't outrun your past. Red Dead still has one of the best written narratives in any video game, let alone open world titles. Despite not even needing it to be an easy contender for the top 10, Red Dead's world is inhabited by plenty of colourful characters and genuinely captivating side content that puts any modern Bethesda or Ubisoft game to shame. I've not even mentioned the gameplay yet. What could I even say that would do this game justice? If you want to feel like a cowboy, Red Dead is the be-all and end-all of any option. Number 5. Metal Gear Solid 4. I am a big Metal Gear Solid fan. I love nearly every game in the franchise a lot. Hence why Metal Gear Solid 4 was the easiest pick for this list. The game exists solely to appease longtime fans of the series and no one else, and it couldn't make me happier. Yes, it's bloated, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and constantly borderlines on the insane. But I still love it, because nestled inside 
all of that bollocks is a beautiful send-off to one of PlayStation's most iconic characters, if not the most iconic. It helps that the series' carefully crafted stealth gameplay is better than ever, as well as all the characters and scenarios managing to find that impossible balance between being silly as f and deadly serious, sometimes at the same time. The last two hours of the game are a nostalgic overload that's been built up since the original arcade games three decades ago. It's a shame that Konami felt the need to exploit the franchise further after Metal Gear 4, because this is the perfect end to a saga that spanned across my entire lifetime. If you've never played a Metal Gear game before, it's a difficult task, but it is worth the effort, because these games are really f***ing good. Number 6. Batman Arkham Asylum Just like Metal Gear, I also love Batman, but I didn't before I played this game. Arkham City was my first proper introduction to the Batman mythos, and since buying it on a whim in a sale years ago, I've spent countless hours of my time watching, playing, reading an unnatural amount of Batman media. But I still rarely find Batman content that manages to match up to the powerhouse of an experience that Arkham City is. Traversing the game's world is slick and fluid. The combat makes you feel like an absolute unstoppable badass, breaking the bones of any thugs that get in your way. And despite only being able to explore a small section of it, Gotham City has never looked better. But above all else, Rocksteady nailed the characters. The best of Batman's rose gallery are all here. Hugo Strange, as a deranged genius obsessed with Batman's brand of justice, is a perfect foil for the Caped Crusader and inclusions like the Penguin, Professor Pig, and Two-Face all make the most of their time against the Dark Knight. Especially Mr. Freeze, who still has one of the best boss fights in all of gaming. There's even a hidden easter egg that kept me excited for a Scarecrow return years before Arkham Knight was even announced. Shame they couldn't do the same for Killer Croc. But without a doubt, it's the Joker that consistently steals the spotlight. Mark Hamill is the Joker. And this game features by far what I think is the best interpretation of that character. And I challenge anyone who disagrees with me to fight me in a car park. Bruce Wayne. Number 7. Dark Souls. I hate Dark Souls. But obviously, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind? <laughs> Keeping that in the video. <laughs> right, where was I? Right. But obviously, that's why I love it. Dark Souls might be the most rewarding game I've ever had the displeasure of playing. And it's great. Fighting against what seems possible. <laughs> that's two. One more. Three strikes, you're out. You can do it without me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Fighting against what seems like impossible odds again and again gives you such a feeling of triumph that it keeps you coming back for more punishment every time. Even though I was constantly being knocked down, and no matter how many times I felt like flinging my controller across the room in a rage, I kept trying. And that's because Dark Souls is masterful at pushing you forward and giving you just enough to get that little bit better each time until you finally kick the shit out of whatever's been kicking the shit out of you. The ability to level up by defeating lesser enemies and the plethora of hidden items scattered across the environment gives you just enough opportunity to beat that difficult boss. On the topic of environments, Dark Souls is fucking gorgeous. From the at first seemingly tranquil city of Arnor Londo to the hell-inspired depths of Lost Isolith, Every part of this world has its place. Except for Blighttown. Blighttown sucks donkey dick. Dark Souls made such an impact that it almost single-handedly created the Souls-like genre. But unlike a lot of its clones, Dark Souls is still capable of keeping you engrossed in its world despite attempting to crush your spirit every chance it gets. And despite hating it, I f***ing love it. Number 8. Dead Space 2. If Dead Space 1 is alien, Dead Space 2 is aliens. 
ramping up the action aspect in a horror sequel usually doesn't go down so well. But unlike Resident Evil 4 before it, Dead Space 2 managed to provide plenty of new ways to shoot, smash and explode the necromorphs without sacrificing the overall vibe established by the first. On the few occasions the focus on creeping sci-fi horror is dropped, it's replaced with exciting punchy action sequences. And although you may be more powerful now, you sure as sh** do not feel it. The same overpowering sense that you're only one encounter away from being ripped apart is still present. Originally, I put the first Dead Space here, but after thinking on it, I can't help but feel that Dead Space 2 is the superior game. Everything from the first game is here, except this time, it's all been reworked to feel much more precise. Both the combat and the story share the same level of focus that'll keep you engrossed from the beginning all the way to the bitter end. Number 9. Left 4 Dead. Every console generation needs a game like Left 4 Dead. An easily digestible shootout with your friends against the undead. The original Left 4 Dead takes a spot above its sequel, partly because it did it first, but mainly because the atmosphere in the original game is so much more oppressive than the second. It does a much better job at making you feel as though your escape will need to be fought for. And I did have more to say about the game, but something went wrong with my notes and now I've lost it and I'm not rewriting it. So, when I started this list, I found it really difficult to narrow down to just 10 games. After all, that's seven years worth of video games to choose from. So after looking at my notes, I decided if I couldn't write more than four paragraphs about a game, I obviously didn't like it. And no, this isn't because this section will pad out the video's runtime, that's just a pleasant side effect. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. No matter how you feel about Call of Duty nowadays, there's no denying that Modern Warfare was a masterclass in how to make a first person shooter. Despite its tight shooting mechanics, a campaign worth the price tag alone, and generation defining multiplayer, it's easy to forget that Call of Duty was once the hottest franchise in gaming. Skyrim. If you're after an immersive RPG with an impressive world and plenty of content, you don't need to look any further than Skyrim. It honestly would have been oblivion in here, but I think the fact that game's borderline unplayable and kinda nightmarish disqualifies it. It may suffer from Bethesda's usual lack of polish, but that doesn't hold it back from standing out as one of the true triumphs in gaming. It might not be the best fantasy RPG ever made, but it used to be. Halo 3. I don't actually like Halo. It is one of the first games I played on the 360, but then again so was Turok and Alone in the Dark, and I played them a lot more. This honestly is just here to appease the people that really like Halo and will yell at me for not putting Halo on here. So here it is. One thing. Hmm? For honourable mentions. Yeah? Can you mention Skyrim Soul of the Week? Alright, I don't know where this is going to be put because it's not actually in the script, but my editor won't leave me the f*** alone and keep saying, You should say Skyward Sword, you say Skyward Sword. I've never played Skyward Sword. I'm sure it's great. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. I'm, do I'm trying to... I'm doing this for you. Skyward Sword is 10 out of 10. It's the best game I've ever played. I've not played it, but it's here. Great. We can move on now. You happy? You want Skyward Sword? You make your own top 10 list. Number 10. Telltale's Walking Dead. There are a few games that I have decided I will never spoil. For any reason at all, no matter what, I will not spoil these games for people. No matter how old they get, I won't run the risk of ruining the experience for someone who hasn't had the chance to play them yet. It probably won't be much of a surprise that I also have Metal Gear Solid 3 on that list, but there's only one other game that I'd consider equally unspoilable. Unspoilerable? Unspoilerable. And that's Telltale's The Walking Dead. Let that be a warning. I imagine most people already know how the game pans out, but I'm still not going to discuss any important story beats. Instead, I'll just say, over its five episodes, Telltale's Walking Dead will grab you, hold on to your heart, and never let go but it'll also have no trouble ripping that heart out of your chest. Not a single character isn't memorable. Lee and Clementine specifically, I think should go down as the greatest duo in gaming. That's right, f*** Joel and Ellie. Lee and Clementine are the power couple. They're not a couple, that's weird. Lee and Clementine are the power, pseudo father-daughter relationship. Every high is monumentous, 
and every low is agonizing. The developers did such an amazing job at making you feel like you are Lee, while still giving him a character of his own. Yes, the gameplay is simplistic, and once you realise that, in the grand scheme of things, your choices don't have a profound impact on the overall narrative ending, it does take a little bit of wind from under the game's sails. But it also frees you to relax in the knowledge that even if you make a bad decision, the rest of the story will play out in a way that's satisfying and cohesive. I don't often cry at films or games, but The Walking Dead pushed me there.